Hey, it's Kim from Expressions of the Universe with your weekly wisdom for May 13th through the 21st. I have cards for all astrological zodiac signs. I've got your crystal of the week, the cards of the week, and we're on approach to the full flower moon in Scorpio with a total lunar eclipse. I almost said solar lunar eclipse happening May 15th or 16th, depending on where you are in the world. So let's get started. My crystal of the week that I'm picking because it is a full moon in Scorpio is smoky quartz. My nails are atrocious. They need to be done, but oh well. And um, it's just, I just polish them and I, I don't have time. But anyway, this smoky quartz is my fave. Why do I like smoky quartz for Scorpio? You'll see that it kind of matches my shirt because I felt like this energy is very Halloween-ish. Um, it's protective. It protects against negative energies. The quartz portion provides clarity. And I feel, I feel like I got a fur, like one of the dog's furs. Um, I feel like smoky quartz shows us clarity through the smoke in the mirrors, through the shadow. You know, Scorpio energy is very shadowy. So I think this is the perfect crystal for me to use. You can go ahead and use that as well. Um, of course, moonstone. However, because we are in eclipse season, <clears throat> and I keep losing my voice. I've, I have terrible allergies. Still not over it. Because we're in eclipse season, I don't recommend doing rituals. I don't recommend um, moon water or charging crystals during eclipse season. I've written about it extensively. If you have a question, post it. I'll answer it. But it's basically because eclipses are chaotic. And we have so much energy going on. I'll show you the chart in just a little bit after I do the cards. So I tried to get the, the dogs uh, to pick the cards. They did. When I asked the beagle, he just rolled over on his belly and did this with his paws. Like, I'm not coming over there. So then Bay Marie, she came. And she chose these three cards, although she really wanted to play with her ball. And I think they're perfect for this week, this eclipse season. Um, so the first one that came out, it's, oh, I'm using the Seven Energies Oracle deck by Colette Baron reed I couldn't find the book or the box. Um, I keep these in my tarot bag for travel, so I don't know where that is, so I'm just going with my intuition. The first card, it's healing the heart, and it's card number 23, I think, so that, that nets to a five, which is change, but healing the heart, it's definitely going right towards the heart chakra. Um, let me, I did take some notes and I have them up here so that I can read it to you um, of what my notes were. I, I dictated. All right. So healing the heart. Um, this is definitely the heart chakra energy. And so when we're wounded, emotionally, which I don't think there's anybody that can say that they're not. We need time to regroup and find our center. Um, we may have endured a breakup, a betrayal, a loss. Um, we may have lost someone or, you know, something very close to us. Perhaps we're watching a friend go through this. So this is a really good time to like go within ourselves and to seek that heart healing. And 
Um, I just think that this is perfect for this energy because the full moon, first of all, full moon in Scorpio, full moons are for elimination, for letting go of things. Scorpio is about elimination and then couple that with the eclipse. So this is a south node eclipse, lunar eclipse. South node is about elimination. So we're doing a deep dive within our emotions, which also affect our mental and physical bodies. So remember that I will post a deeper channeled message during the week on this. The next card she picked is the storyteller. And that's card 17. To me, that talks about connecting with the self and the divine. The storyteller specifically speaks about the stories that we tell ourselves, the stories that we tell other people about ourselves, and how that affects how we're treated, how our life plays out. Um, I know there are a lot of you out there that it's time to start telling a new and different story. Doesn't mean that you get to forget those bits and pieces, but you know, the grief and the sorrow, animosity, anger, that's gotta go. And you have to keep, you have to stop keeping that story on loop or your life won't change. And then there comes the time machine, which is tied in to our story, but on an ancestral level. So the time machine, and that's card number three, so that's Ascended Masters. The time machine specifically talks about what are the stories that your ancestors, ancestors passed down through your lineage? Um, is it true? Is it re relevant to you today? Are you still carrying maybe some of those wounds from your ancestors? So when we do hard healing, when we heal ourselves emotionally, mentally, physically, it not only helps to clear seven generations back, but seven generations forward. The time machine also asks if you could go back in time and change anything. So this Scorpio full moon, is really um, kind of like a portal we're in. And so think back to different times um, if you could change something. Now, you know, we've all had horrible things happen to us in our lives. Those things are the things that have shaped us. We can sit and observe those things from the past, clear them, and move on into the future. So I will post channeled message with the energy and the astrology on Facebook and Instagram during the week on those cards to give us a little more clarity, how we can use that energy that we are in. Um, astrologically, this full flower moon in Scorpio is at 25 degrees. 17 minutes in Scorpio. I'll show you the chart. So it will also be affecting all fixed signs. Um, the sun will be moving into Gemini next Thursday, I think it is, or Friday, the 20th of May. I can't believe May is almost over. Um, this whole first half of the year has just really flew by. So I'm going to pull cards for each sign, starting with Aries. Pay attention to your sun sign, your rising sign, your moon sign. And if you have any stellium or cluster of planets in another sign, you'll want to pay attention to that too. All right, I'm going to cut these and then I'm just going to take them right from the top. I will have to put my glasses on so I can see what they are. Okay. Aries. Oh, this is wish upon a star, Aries. It's time for you to make wishes. Jupiter just moved into Aries only a few days ago. So there's been a huge shift in energy. I feel it. I feel as though 
a veil of gloom has lifted off of me, a veil of gloom that has been around for like two years almost. Um, card 39. So that's Ascended Masters and a new path. So it's time for you to ask for divine help, put you on that path, make that wish. Love it. Love it. And you know, this just reminds me of, you really have to feel your wishes deep within your heart in order for them to manifest. But when you make that wish, kind of like when you're blowing out the candles on a birthday cake, you're letting it go. So you make the wish, you let it go. Um, if you obsess about it, I think you're holding on too much. So this, this moon is really designed for us to learn how to let go of a lot of things that just no longer serve, whether it's an emotion, a thought, a physical thing, physical item, person, you know, you know, if there's anything causing you ill ease in your life, it's got to go. So make that wish kind of like blowing out a candle and let it go. Watch it manifest. Taurus, you have seeing beyond. So Taurus, this is interesting because the sun is in Taurus. It will be for this full moon at 25 degrees. Um, I'm a 27 degree Taurus rising. So I'm sure there's going to be some effect on that. But this is such, you'll see when I'm doing the chart in a little bit, there is a lot of septile energy, which is other dimensional, otherworldly energy. It's kind of on another plane. Um, septile with, Saturn, Mars, Venus, Jupiter's almost in there. I mean, it's just so slight. Um, so I feel as though for the Tauruses, with you getting this card, it's almost like, you know, tapping right into that third eye, that deeper knowing. That's also part of the, um, the septile energy. It's like, synchronicities, coincidences, like something is being plotted in your on your behalf from the other side. Pay attention to the signs. Seeing beyond is about, you know, flashes of intuition. I've been having crazy dreams. Uh, I mean, really insane dreams lately. So just pay attention to all of that symbolism. This is card 36 that nets to a nine. So that's like an ending of something. A new path is coming. Ascended masters and a material abundance and also relationships are involved there. Gemini. Gemini, the royal you. I love that for this Gemini, for this twin, the royal you. This is about treating yourself like you are royalty um really boosting that self-esteem amping it up it is card 16 it's about the self it is about what we're open to what we're not open to it nets to a seven so that's divine connection when we treat ourselves well i think you know universal energy is like yes um so, yeah, I really love that. And especially with Gemini season just around the corner, you will be treating yourself like royalty. If not you, who else, right? Okay, Cancers. It is a tall tale, a tall tale. So Cancers, this kind of goes with that storyteller card and the time machine, a tall tale really speaks to me about the stories that you're telling yourselves. Um, the stories that you're telling others are, is something being fabricated. Also, cancers, I would watch out for somebody telling you a tall tale. Uh, something that may sound too good to be true probably is. It is card number 34. 
five, that nets to an eight. So it would have to maybe do with abundance in some sort of a way, ascended masters and change. So something could be ripped out from under you, cancers, um, unexpectedly. This is actually for all of us with this eclipse. Just know that it's for your higher benefit. You may not be able to see it now, but trust, trust. Leo, okay, card number one, it's earth magic. And this is so true for the Leos because this, the sun and the moon, total solar, total <laughs> lunar eclipse, um, this full moon will be squaring both Leos and Aquariuses. So really, it's so important to get grounded. Take a cue from my smoky quartz, um, getting out into nature. So you'll see this beautiful woman, her feet are on the ground. Take your shoes off and get in the ground, get into the earth, the beach, the sand, the ocean, a creek, whatever, ground it out. Um, card number one talks about the self. It's about a realignment for you guys. This is, this. there's going to be tension for the Leos uh, because of that square. And so it, you're going to have to breathe through it. And the best way to get through for any of us is to take your shoes off and go stand on the earth because that will ground you. Um, it's called earthing. You can look that up. I've written about it. I've posted about it. And the really insane thing about grounding out in the earth is when you have a pain in your body and you place it on the earth. So like if you have a headache, lay your head on the earth, your headache will go away instantly. Um, if you have an injury, you know, like your arm or whatever, lay down on the earth. And while you're laying there, the pain is gone because there's something to do with uh, the ions, the negative and positive ions, that it just neutralizes those the, the pain receptors in your body. But as soon as you stand up, it comes right back. So just lay there, right? Okay. Uh, Virgos, the little virgins. You have divine matrix and one of my favorite numbers, 44, that is all about creativity um, and abundance. It is also about finding your place of belonging, but the divine matrix, it's about tapping in to that vortex, the vortex of I am energy, I will energy, you know, all of that positivity. Um, and what it is that you're creating. I really love that. And I'm trying to think of how Virgo is affected. So, yeah, so the, the sun, the sun, the moon, the moon will be sextiling anything in Virgo. So that's really like a harmonic. Um, but remember, some things could be vacuumed out, vacuumed away. I love that master number of 44 because that is super powerful. And the Virgos finally may be tapping into that divine matrix and making things happen for them after we get out of this eclipse season. Libra, a deep breath. Card number seven. So that talks about divine energy. Um, it's really hard to see. I'm going to put that up there. You can see that spirit face in the card. A deep breath. So this is saying take a deep breath, take a step back, take a rest, take a pause, um, go within, balance things out, Libra. There is no rush here. Right now, there's no rush for the next, you know, upcoming, at least till the next full moon. So just take it easy. Breathe. Don't overtax yourselves, Libra. Don't do too much uh, because you could have a total meltdown from that. So take my advice. 
Uh, Scorpio, we have awakening genius. Card number 29, which equals an 11 master number. Um, 11, 11, make a wish. Awakening genius. This is your full moon, Scorpios. And this should be clearing out the cobwebs, waking you up. Um, the awakening genius is like the, the, the wise crone, the wise Methuselah living within you will finally wake up and emerge from this. This is exactly what the Scorpios have needed for the past couple of years, because I feel like Scorpios have been in like this lock down that they just can't seem to get out of. They can't emerge from this will get you out and it will wake up all of your senses and, you know, maybe Akashic record knowledge, um, past life knowledge, ancestral knowledge. I love that for the Scorpios. Sagittarians, waking the lion. Hmm, very fire sign. Um, waking the lion talks about pride versus ego. You hear them? Sorry. Uh, it is card number 19, talking about the self ending a new beginning a new path that you're coming on to for the Sagittarians a new adventure possibly uh, waking the lion talks uh, really about creativity it talks about the fire the passion that burns with inside of us should be waking up um, now waking the lion you don't want that to be an aggressive type of lion with that roar and if that part of the lion does wake up, then it's best to just walk away from the situation at this point, Sages. I love that card for you, though. Capricorns, little goats, smoke and mirrors. Interesting, because I said that smoky quartz will clear smoke and mirrors. So are you disillusioned, Capricorns, by something? by someone. It is card 42. So this talks about, are you in the right place where you should be? Um, how are your emotions? What are you open to? Are you too open or are you too closed off? I feel like smoke and mirrors, somebody could be blowing some bullshit up your ass. Um, do not be disillusioned because I really feel that that's what that means for the Capricorns and smoke and mirrors. I'm just trying to think, you know, like be careful who your associations are. And like I said earlier to the Cancers, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Slow your roll, wait it out, see how things progress and develop. Do not rush into anything right now because maybe you're also kidding yourselves about something um you're not some of you may not be seeing things as clearly as you should be so just give it a moment wait for this energy to pass capricorns aquarius so you're going to be hard hit also too by this full moon and lunar eclipse and Interesting, uh, your card is a power move. It is card 15. A power move is saying things are being set up. Although it may be tense, it may be trying. You're being pushed, Aquarians, to go to that next level. The ball will be in your court. You will have the power move. Don't let anybody take your power away from you. Do not feel weakened. Don't lower your self-esteem. If things are a little tough right now, um, I like this because there's a the key. The key to everything is about to be yours. And like I said, the power move. So similar in a chess game, you have to think your moves out before you actually make them. So you, you too want to slow your roll. You want to think things out before 
you open your mouth before you make the move because you don't want to be shooting yourself in the foot. Play the game correctly. The key to opening all your desires could be coming out of this lunar eclipse. And last but not least, Pisces. Interesting. It is what it is. And <laughs> isn't that so true for so many of the Pisces? I, I feel like Pisces that I know in my life personally have been saying it is what it is for far too long. It is card number six. Um, but this six, it does talk about material abundance. So there could be some financial issues with the Pisces at the current time. And it is what it is. It's like, there's no way getting out of that right now. But it also talks about what are you open to? What are you not open to? Uh, maybe you're shutting uh, opportunities out that, you know, could fix the situation, make the situation better. Um, this is really just talking to me about facing the issues at hand that currently will be presenting themselves kind of similar to the cancer, you know, the Scorpio moon is trining your sun or your rising or your ascend, uh, your, your sun rising or your moon or your stellium, whatever it is you have in Pisces. I friggin' have Chiron and Saturn in Pisces. So it is what it is. And I'm getting ready for my Saturn return. So things have been a little tense, but I got to tell you, Jupiter moving into Aries really has made a difference. Um, but yeah, suck it up, Pisces, because it, it, this is just a small blip in time compared to the bigger picture. You'll get through this. Um, so yeah, I'm just making sure that I got everybody. Mm -hmm. 10, 11, 12. Okay, all 12 signs. Perfect. All righty then. Let's go on to the astrology real quick and then we'll get out of here and enjoy our weekend. I had to pull my hair up. I did blow it dry and it looked great, but it's so humid here and uh, my hair started curling and frizzing and it was like out to here. So I had to control it. All right. Oh, by the way, I am working at Solutions. I'm doing readings at Solutions for Daily Living in Newtown, Pennsylvania on Sunday, this Sunday and next Sunday. And I think I may have a spot or two open if you are interested. So let me pull up the chart that I wanted to show you. And then we'll get out of here. All right, let me share my screen. Okay. Um, darn. That isn't what I wanted to do. Sorry. I can't figure out how to. There we go. I wanted to do full screen. But once again, it's not allowing me to do the full screen. Anyway, so here we have, I'm going to bring up my little annotator. Here we have the sun in Taurus at 25 degrees on this full flower moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. It is, oh, darn it. I should have practiced this in advance. Okay. So here we have the sun and then the moon in, in Scorpio. They're, op they're opposite of each other or opposing each other. That's what creates the full moon. Um, we have the south node. This is what creates the eclipse. South node, north node. Uh, we get it, we get eclipses when those nodes are very close to the moon and the sun. All right, the other signs that we want to look out for because Scorpio and Taurus are fixed signs, the other fixed signs are Aquarius. 
and Leo. I had to move you guys over so that I could see. Um, they will be the hardest hit. Now, what I what else I'm keeping my eye on is Uranus. Expect the unexpected. If you know, like I don't watch the news, but I do get a news feed on my day job work computer. And I saw that the cryptocurrency crashed. Personally, my 401k is uh, the rate of return is negative 16%. I'm bleeding money of my retirement account. Um, but I know it'll recover. But the crypto, I, I mean, that is Uranus and Taurus because, you know, Taurus is the money, and I knew something crazy was going to happen. I'm sure it'll rebound at some point. The other things that I'm looking at, so if you take a look here, these purple lines, that is called a septile, and we will have a septile between Uranus and I believe... I think it's Uranus and Venus, and also Mars, almost uh, Jupiter. So that is that otherworldly, other dimension energy, like something behind the scenes in the universe. Universal energy is being created for our benefit. This is definitely UFO energy. So I know that my neighbor and I, when we're out doing fire pits, we look up at the skies and we're seeing some crazy stuff, not satellites or anything. Like, I know what a satellite looks like up in the skies, but there's some weird shit going on up there. So if you are flying in an airplane on, you know, Saturday evening, Sunday night, or sun, you know, Sunday, take a look out your window because you might see something crazy. Watch the skies. Um, Saturn is Saturn's in a square. You can see that here. Uh, to the south node, that's going to be tense restrictions. Maybe this is a good thing because maybe the shock of Uranus up here, maybe that rug won't be pulled out. Maybe Saturn will hold some things back. I don't know. We'll have to see. We also have Saturn squaring the opposite direction. You can see that square right here. It's actually a T-square because we have the opposition. I know that looks like such a mess, huh? Um, anyway, I will be posting, stop sharing. I will be posting some more information about the eclipse, how you can see it, where you can see it. It'll be mostly in North and South America, some of Europe. Um, coming in at 12.14 a.m. May 16th. So just after midnight, the eclipse begins around nine-ish on the 15th. Unfortunately, here on the East Coast, the it, we've been in this weekend rain pattern where it rains all weekend long. And I had all of my camera equipment ready and set up to take some incredible photos. And I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it because it's supposed to pour rain all weekend. Although the moon looked beautiful last night coming in through my bedroom window. This is open window season, sleeping with the windows open. That's also probably why my sinuses are so horrible. I wake up and I cannot breathe. I'm waking up with, in the morning, bloody noses. Um, I had fluid in my ear from the eustachian tube thing. I'm not horrible. I'm actually doing really, really good. Um, but I'm very sinusy, trying to prevent it from getting into my chest. What else? I think that's all I have for you guys. Have a beautiful weekend. Um, happy full moon. That's all I have. Until next time. So.
If you like this video, please share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, check out the other videos, and I'll see you in another week or so. Bye.